if you're spending more than like three hours a day on content review, you're probably wasting time. Now this is different from a lot of other tests that you've taken and a lot of tests you will take in medical school too, but the truth of it is that the MCAT is not about memorization. And I know that you've heard that a million times and it just doesn't sit, but I'm going to show you today a little bit. The truth is you have to memorize some surface level details, but it's much more important to understand it conceptually rather than just memorizing details that you can just regurgitate. And this is important too, right? Because you don't want to just memorize what the signs and symptoms of a heart attack are. You want to be able to apply that into a unique scenario because the truth is a lot of stuff doesn't present initially the way that you would think it would or patients aren't really able to explain it the way that the textbook says it. Like a patient might come in to your clinic or to the emergency department or something like that and say to you like, doc, my chest is hurting. Uh, it hurts like right here and maybe that's all they have because they're not really paying attention to the nuances. And so your first thought is going to be, oh my gosh, this is a heart attack. And you're going to rule that out. But you have to ask unique specific questions so that you can narrow down what the complaint actually is. Because the truth is it could be a thousand different things. And it's not always a heart attack. And it's the same thought process here. That's why I think the MCAT's actually a pretty good test. So let me show you an example uh, I don't even know what test this is from, but it's not a spoiler. I mean, it is a spoiler. Don't worry about it if you're freaking out over it. If you get one question right because you saw it on this video, it's not going to change your score. So don't worry about that. This is from AAMC, so you know that it's indicative of what you would see on test day. But this question says, Dendrotoxin from the mamba snake blocks voltage-gated potassium channels and somatic motor neurons that regulate skeletal muscle contraction. In what way would initial exposure to dendrotoxin affect the ability of a somatic motor neuron to propagate an electrical signal in response to a stimulus. Okay, if you are like a memorization heavy person, you're going to read this and you're probably going to narrow it down quickly and simplify this question, or at least you should be, to what happens if I block the voltage gated potassium channels. And I've drawn out here um, kind of like the cycles of an uh, action potential with their associated ion channels to kind of illustrate what we would think would happen, right? So we know that uh, once you hit this depolarization voltage, the sodium gated voltage channels open and then they flood up and then these potassium channels, which is the ones that they're talking about, once you get to a certain voltage, now those open up. They allow for the influx of potassium and that leads to closing off or depolarizing or hyperpolarizing rather this action potential. So you may know all that, but if you are thinking in like this memorization mindset, then you're going to be freaking out because you're like, oh my gosh, I never learned what happened if this potassium channel didn't shut off or if this potassium channel didn't open up. That can really mess you up. You can either miss this question or you can spend way too long on it, which is just equally as deadly, right? So I'm trying to emphasize the point of understanding why things are happening and the concepts behind them rather than memorizing a thousand different details because if you know all the voltages where these things typically happen, that's not gonna help you on the MCAT. But if you understand that the purpose of these opening is to allow the movement of sodium ions, which leads to this depolarization, and the purpose of this opening is to allow for the movement of the potassium ions, which is going to negatively combat the movement of the sodium channels, then you're going to think, oh, well, what happens if I don't have this open? Well, then I guess the sodium is just going to like run unopposed or something. So whatever's happening here at the peak is just going to keep happening, right? And that would allow you to easily narrow this down to it would prolong the action potential. So the point of that was to show that even these simple facts can get twisted into difficult concepts. And so you don't need to be spending more time reading more books or trying to memorize more details because the truth is they're just going to take basic stuff like an action potential and they're going to ask it in a difficult fashion. Now that leads me to the most deadly thing that happens to students when they're studying and my experience tutoring the MCAT and that is students falling prey to the content trap. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John. I am a fourth year medical student. I just matched into plastic surgery up at Wake Forest. So I'll be making North Carolina beautiful again coming this July. I actually had to take the MCAT 
MCAT four times before I finally figured it out and went from scoring like below 500 to the 90th percentile. And then I tutored and worked for some of the big national companies for a couple of years before coming back to medical school, starting this business and the associated YouTube channel that you're watching now with my co-tutor and my little sister, Maggie. She's a third year medical student. We started this channel because we saw the trends that if you pay for tutoring, if you have high quality tutoring, or if your big brother is an MCAT tutor, you're gonna do well in the MCAT. But if you don't, then you may not. So it's our hope that all you would need to study for the MCAT are our free resources. But if you're a student like I was myself or like Maggie was, and you're just ready to take this test one more time, get a great score and move on, that you would look at our resources first as a thank you for all the free resources that we've put out. The content trap is deadly and it's like what you see all over Reddit, right? People are freaking out over like, which resources should I study? Which book should I study? And things of that nature. The truth of the matter is that like all of these different resources have their pros and cons, but most of the textbooks, if their whole goal is to be thorough, they're gonna cover like the same crap. I mean, Le Chatelier's principle just hasn't changed in forever. So there's no reason for you to read Kaplan books and the Blueprint books and the UWorld books. You're just wasting time. And a lot of students kind of get like drawn into this, like just one more video mentality or they're scared to jump into practice questions. So they just keep learning content and watching content. And really you just need to rip the bandaid off. That's why when I was personal tutoring students, one of the first things you did if you were my student is you were taking a full length practice exam. That's because one, I wanted you to see like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is not easy. And I will buy into what John says because he scored well and I am not. And two, because I don't want you to be afraid to practice questions. I mean, you're gonna score poorly. And honestly, like it's better that you score poorly at the beginning because now you're motivated to keep going. And if you didn't score poorly, then you would have been wasting your time studying. So look at it like that. So a lot of students make the huge mistake, and I call it the content trap, of spending weeks and weeks and months studying content, trying to learn content without ever taking the first practice question. And I'm telling you, you're missing the mark with that. That is not how this test works. It's not undergraduate. This is a lot more difficult and it requires more of a nuanced understanding of how the test works and how the test is phrased and how the test asks these questions than it does more content. Because like you just saw with our example, they're not gonna ask you which ion channel opens to counteract the sodium channel. They're gonna ask you something about some weird dendro black mamba Kobe Bryant toxin and make you extrapolate that basic science knowledge of you know what's, what's the interplay between the sodium channels and the potassium voltage gated channels. They're gonna make you make that assumption. There's no way to prep for that. You just have to know the sciences and then get some reps and practice applying them. It's like if you ever played sports, then you know that you can spot up. I would play basketball and I was a shooter for me. You look at me, I'm like 5'10 and wasn't very athletic. So I was a shooter and I can tell you the difference in just spotting up in the corner and hitting threes in practice with nobody guarding you is so much different than the difference and having somebody flying at you after you've already been playing defense and you're tired and your legs are gone and you're still trying to hit that same shot. So the only way to simulate that is to get practice in that scenario. So we would scrimmage in sports, right? Or we would do drills. Or when I was by myself, I would go run up and down the court a few times and have a broom sitting in front of my face so I could practice shooting. So you have to simulate that real experience. And there's no way to simulate like the nerves and everything that come along with it. But if you get good enough at practice practicing the actual scenario of applying the sciences in a unique setting through practice questions, just like I did whenever I was practicing being tired, having dead legs, and still being able to rise up and hit the shot with a hand in my face, then you're gonna score well on the MCAT because the nerves, honestly, once you're a machine, the nerves just kind of fuel you. You still feel them. I still felt them on step two. I walked out, thought I did horrible, and I crushed it. So once you make yourself into a machine, there's really not a whole lot of nerves that can knock you off. So that should be your goal while you're practicing all this, is to get as many game time reps, as many repetitions that look just like the MCAT, so that you just become a dog. And then it doesn't really matter how nervous you get because you've seen this before, it's okay. And so that brings up the question of what do successful students do differently than someone that's caught in that content trap. And these students emphasize something that I call just-in-time learning. And this is what I did for steps as well, which are the 
They're kind of like the MCAT that you take for residency, basically. So you have to get a solid understanding of the foundational concepts. That's usually what we refer to as the high yield concepts. And that's honestly all we teach at IFD. We don't teach a whole lot of low yield. We teach some mid yield. We, we weave them in whenever they're applicable. But all we teach really is the high yield stuff because you have to have a foundation and then you have to learn stuff just in time, which is you got to learn it by missing practice questions on it. It's going to sit deeper if you learn it by missing a practice question on it than it is if you read it in the Kaplan book, the UWorld book, the Princeton book, the Altius book, the IFD book. You can read it in five books, you're not gonna understand it as well as if you miss one question on it. I'm telling you, and you know that this is true because you still remember random facts that you missed from a test in eighth grade. Now it's not all about just taking a ton of questions. You have to really solidify the content and that's where this active review comes in. So active learning is much better than passive review and that's why if you're going to be taking, say you have like six hour study day carved out and you know you wanna get through 50 practice questions, take those first when you're most fresh. And then towards the end, whenever you know that your brain's gonna be in like, I'm ready to leave this room and go work out or something mode, that's when you can do your more passive stuff like Anki. So now I wanna put this all together for you because I've talked about a lot of stuff, I've crapped on some stuff, I've said some stuff was good. So let me put this all together for you so that you can implement it into your studies today. Studying for the MCAT is a three-step process. You have to have a good content foundation, understanding the concepts, memorizing the small details that you have to, like Planck's constant, it's just a number. You can't understand a number, you just memorize it. Then you go take practice questions to test how well you understood that content specifically. I used to be a fan of taking questions that were not related to concepts that I had studied yet, but honestly, I think it just takes too long. And really the reason that I was doing that and I was having my students do that is because I didn't have a way to have them take targeted questions on the specific topics they had just studied. But I think that's better, right? If your questions not only serve as practice to get reps and application, but to kind of be a measuring stick for how well you actually encoded the content you just learned, then that's better than just taking practice questions so that you kind of like get used to the WMC language or whatever, right? And so content foundation, take relevant practice questions specific to the topics you just studied, and then a deep review. And I'm telling you, this is where you make the most improvements. It's where most people mess up. So I wanna encourage you whenever you review a question and you think you're done, you think you get it all, find one more thing, learn one more thing in that review okay that will push you to really give the review everything that you've got so instead of watching like a 60 minute lecture on glycolysis watch a 15 minute breakdown of it and then spend the other 45 minutes doing questions on glycolysis and you're gonna know glycolysis much better than if you had just watched an hour-long lecture I promise you and this whole workflow is the exact reason why we built the UWorld X IFD high yield course. It was made for people that don't wanna waste time, that have busy schedules, you got family, you've got a social life, but you still wanna be a doctor, right? And so the flow of that course is the same flow that I'm trying to recommend to you. So essentially we have students complete a short application focused lecture where you have myself or Maggie, 90th percentile score in me, 100th percentile score in her, I know she's better. We lecture you through the basic sciences with a focus on how the MCAT actually tests it. Then we have hand-picked UWorld questions that we comb through all like 3,000 of them and we pick the questions that are not only directly testing what you learned but also that are one step further to challenge you a little bit and show you how all these like low yield concepts can kind of link into those high yield concepts. And then we leverage UWorld's like excellent review so that if there are low yield concepts that are not covered in our foundational lectures, you're gonna get them in the UWorld review portion. I mean, if you've done any UWorld, you know that that's by far the best solutions text. And all I did whenever I was step studying was I learned kind of the foundation through my first two years. And then during third year, I didn't have time to do any more content. And a lot of my peers folk, like decided to just do content. And I was like, I've already got a decent understanding of like the foundations. I just need practice questions and reps. So I just went into UWorld and learned the stuff that I was missing from their solutions text. And I scored 90th percentile on step two, which is like, it's pretty much the test that decides if you get to go to the residency you wanna to go to or the specialty that you wanna be in if you're trying to do something competitive like plastics. 
All in all, this whole video is designed to try to get you to spend more time practicing and less time cramming because I will be the first to tell you you do not need to take hundreds of practice questions for a standardized test. You need to take thousands. It is the only research backed method to improve standardized testing scores. And that's why at IFD, we're not gonna bombard you with all this content and charge $400 for a book set and all that crap because it's just not research backed. And the way to do it is to get a foundation, get some relevant practice and review it deeply to plug in any holes that you're missing. So if this style of studying resonates with you, you're like, that's what I'm missing. And you want something that's already pre-built for you so that you don't have to go and like piecemeal all these resources and ask yourself, you know, what's high yield and how do I, take specific questions related to those topics. We've already done that for you, and we put it into the UWorldX IFD High Yield course. You can rest assured that you've got two people that actually know what they're talking about teaching it to you, and you've got the best third-party practice questions on the market with the best review by far. It's the system that we wish that we had, right? Short, focused lectures with UWorld baked in so that you can move quickly and actually retain what you're studying. No fluff, no wasted time, right? The link to that course is in the description. It'll be the first one, probably. Um, you can check out all the other crap that we do as well. If you've got a specific weakness for the MCAT, we've probably got a product for it. We don't just make blanket products and say that every student's probably a cookie cutter. We looked back on our experience tutoring hundreds if not a thousand students at this point and a lot of us have the same like fatal flaws we made products to fix those that are geared to fix those right so check out the links in the description thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one